Hello everyone, um, welcome back. It's been a while. Uh, today I just want to cover how to implement movement for some sort of top-down um, action game or shooter. So the interesting thing about this kind of top-down movement is that it works in two parts. You've got uh, WASD controlling the main body, but you've also got um, the mouse controlling where the uh, players looking and where they're pointing their weapon. For example, I can be moving backwards while shooting to the right or anywhere I'd like or diagonal to the right and still have total control over where I'm pointing and shooting. Uh, this can be contrasted to games where you can only, uh, for example, attack directly in front of you or in the direction that you're moving. So how do we uh, go about this? There's a couple things to do. We're going to use a body head system. So the body is going to be in control of the position of the player. And it's actually just an empty game object that has the head as a child of it. And the, uh, the head is going to be controlling which way our character is looking and which way they're pointing their weapon. This visor is just uh, for visual reference. So. Uh, again, so the head is the rotation, body is movement. Uh, to parent or make something a child of something, you just click and drag it on top, and then you can click and drag it out to move it. Uh, my main camera is also a child of my body, just so that my character is always centered. But if you don't, uh, you don't have to do this if you don't want it to always be centered on your screen. So let's actually take a look at the script here. Um, so let's look at the sprinting. So we multiply whenever we move with WSD, we always end up multiplying uh, all of this by speed multiplier. This is just so that you can adjust how fast you want your character to move. I just have it at three. So I'm going to be moving three units per second. And I'll explain why it's per second and not per frame in a second. And then we also have uh, speed fast and speed norm. So we can use our left control key to sprint. And this is just a check to make sure that you're not already sprinting, but it's technically not necessary. So if you're holding the left control, we, sped, we set the speed multiplier to speed fast, uh, which is just the speed multiplier times two. So this would be six units per second. Otherwise, if left control isn't being held down, we just reset the speed multiplier to speed norm, uh, which is again, three units per second. Now, one important thing in your game is you should try to make sure that um, your actions are, a lot of the stuff you're manipulating is uh, frame independent, which means because this update loop will run once per frame, if a player has a faster computer, they're going to uh, run through this update loop faster than a player with a slow computer. And this is just, as, it, it's, it's as simple as coming down to whether someone has 60 frames per second, 45 frames per second, or 30 frames per second. So how do we resolve this issue? We multiply by time dot delta time. Now, when I first saw this, I was kind of confused. It didn't really make sense to me. So what is time dot delta time? Time dot delta time is the time in seconds since the last frame. So basically, if, you have, if you're running at 60 frames per second, it's just one over 60. Because 60 is your frames per second, and one is one second. So that's the time in seconds since the last frame. So how do we use time dot delta time to make all of our movement frame independent? So the top two examples are uh, two users with different uh, computers. So in this one, let's say you're running 60 frames per second and you're moving uh, the character one unit every time they, ho they hold the right, the right key down or the D key, for example. That means we simply uh, multiply that one unit by the amount of frames they're moving, um, by the amount of frames they're getting every second. And we simply see that we're going to run through the update loop 60 times a second. So we're going to move 60 units a second. Now for a user with a slower computer, we can actually see that we're only getting 30 frames per second. So uh, we're going to run through the update loop 30 times in one second. And we're only going to move 30 units per second. So this is kind of an issue because the players, these two players are moving at different speeds 
depending on how fast the computers are running. So the way time.delta time does this is it kind of flips um, the frames per second on its head. So going back to the 60 FPS player, uh, their time.delta time is actually going to be 1 over 60, because again, time.delta time is the time in seconds since your last frame. So if you're going 60 frames per second, the time since your last frame is just going to be uh, 1 second over that 60 FPS. And that uh, this these two 60s cancel out, so we're moving one unit every second. The cool thing about this is that uh, if you replace the 60 with the 30 frames per second, you can see that this becomes 30 and this becomes 30, and again, they just cancel out. So no matter how many frames per second you're going, you're always uh, going to move one unit, uh, one unit per second because these two numbers will always be on the opposite sides of the fraction, so they're always going to cancel out. Oh, as a side effect, it will also um, slow the speed down dramatically. So for example, and it, that effect will become more noticeable the higher FPS. So if you multiply by time dot delta time, you're not going to move 60 units per second. You're going to have to, uh, you're going to move one unit per second. So it'll also just um, divide that amount by the frames per second. So you, you might be going slower than you were before after you multiply by time dot delta time. Which makes sense because usually time to delta time is less than one or a fraction of one. So that's why uh, here for w we just do transform dot position plus equals transform dot forward. So forward being whichever way um, the body is facing. Uh, this is this really won't change because we're not rotating the body, so it's pretty much always going to be up. Times time to delta time times our speed multiplier, which is three or six. Um, the rest of these are pretty much uh, self-explanatory. A is negative right because it's left, S is negative forward because it's back, and D is just right. And we multiply by the same things. So again, taking a look at it, W is always up no matter where we're facing, D is always right, S is always down, and A is always left. So that covers the body. So now let's look at the head. So the head will rotate to look at your mouse. So let's see how that works. Really, it's just these um, four lines, really. So first, what you have to realize is we have to use a mouse screen to camera space. So when we get input.mouseposition.x, that gives us uh, the mouse position. Um, the overall x and y coordinates of the mouse position on your screen. Unity, sta Unity starts counting from the bottom left. So let, if we uncomment these debugs.log, let's see what we get. So you can see here, okay, so this is our origin point. Uh, as we move to the right, our x increases, and as we move up here, our y increases. And there really is no max, which um, so you can keep going up until whatever your limit is, and this will even bring into the negatives. So it's a bit confusing that, but uh, it's able to absolutely get the position of your mouse, no matter where, uh, no matter where it is, even in the minimized game view. Um, so that's the mouse position. And keep in mind that this is x and y, which is going to be important. And if we look at the um, camera world to screen point transform dot position, that's looking at the position of our actual player in our screen space. Let's take a look at that. Okay, as you can see here, it's always the same position, which makes sense because our camera is always above um, our player. So they're always directly in the center of the screen, which is uh, this x and y coordinate. Now the important here is, the important point I here is we want our player to look at a specific position of our mouse. So we have to do two, th uh, two things. The first is convert the um, x and y to, on, to the x and z plane because our player is moving on the 
uh, z and x plane, not the x and y plane. So I create a new vector 3, mouse screen to camera space, and I use the um, x for our x, that directly lines up, but I change the y from uh, its original y position, and I uh, plug it into the z uh, parameter of our vector 3, which is the third one. Um, and I do the same thing for uh, the player position. So x gets x, and z gets y. This translates it from this xy plane, which would be like, uh, kind of, it would be like this, because this is y and this is x, and puts it in this new perspective. Uh, finally, the last step is I just make a new vector called player to mouse, and it's just the mouse screen to camera space vector 3 minus the player screen to camera space. And what that looks like is this. So this is our player, and this is our mouse. If we subtract this vector of our player from our mouse, we get this green resultant vector, which is uh, the vector from the player to the mouse. Uh, finally, we, uh, this debug.draw line is what creates that little white line that pops up. And that's just for debugging purposes, but you can clearly see when we play the game. You can see when we play the game that um, this line does in fact follow our mouse. And I said finally before, but that was a lie. The last line, we just use the transform.lookat command to actually look at this resultant vector. So that's what leads to the rotation. And then uh, if we have a if we just child a weapon to the head, then the weapon will also follow the mouse. So it makes for a very intuitive and easy to use uh, point and shoot mechanic. Okay, uh, that's it for this video. I hope you found that informative and helpful. And I'll see you next time. Next time we'll also discuss um, how to implement weapons and arrows and shooting. Uh, so get ready for that.